Hello and welcome to a very special Control M Presents number of new faces here today. So welcome and we're very glad to have you. We're recording this session like we always do. So I'll be muting you until our question and answer time. If a question pops into your head during the call, please put it in the chat window and we'll get to it then. And a very special thank you to those of you who emailed Veronica questions in advance. Today, our very own Veronica Meyer is going to demystify the TLS messages that Plex has been sending. And look, they do a great job at their communications, but sometimes you just need to talk through it or have it explained in different terms. And after Veronica did her walkthrough with me, I actually understood the messages, so I hope you will too. I've known Veronica for years. She really has a gift for explaining technical things very patiently to folks like me who really get Plex, but maybe aren't so great at PC setup and label printing and all that stuff. Nobody's good at everything, right? So sit back and while then enjoy while Veronica makes everything TLS clear for you. So take it away, V. Thanks for the welcome, Patty. For those who don't know me, I'm a Plex accredited developer who's been working with Plex since 2013. Before that, I did many things in the IT world. This gives me a unique insight to help you understand today's topic. This is what we're gonna be covering today. My team will tell you that when I start to talk about this topic, I seem to speak a foreign language. This will be the English version for everyone who's not a geek like me. What I'm recapping here today for you is summarized from all the various communications Plex has released over the last few months. If for some reason you can't stay for the entire session, or if you can't come to a session, please know that these sessions are on our YouTube channel so you can watch anytime. Our YouTube channel is at the link is in the signature of all our Control M emails and it makes it easy to find. So let's start at the beginning of why this is important. TLS is nothing more than a security standard that companies who create software use to make sure hackers cannot read the information when it's sent through the cloud. When I say support is ending, these companies have been moving and supporting the new version of TLS for years. So it's not new or sudden. In fact, TLS 1.2 is already 10 years old and 1.3 came out in 2018. And you've been using it all along without knowing what it is. What is changing is that we have been able to override the browsers to use the vulnerable version when software required us to. That's what's going away. Many people had to make changes to their computers last year when the browsers no longer were able to access label printing or check out documents in the DCS. Component host is exactly what you see here. It's software Plex wrote to link what is happening in the Michigan or Colorado data center to physical devices in your office or on the plant floor. Because the information is traveling in the cloud, we want it to be encrypted and secure and to use the most current security protocols. Now, depending on how long you've been using Plex, you might be already familiar with the history. First, there was only support for Internet Explorer and people complained they wanted the cool new browsers. The web browser plugin was so you could use Chrome and Firefox. When Google changed what they would support, Plex created a downloaded software called WebSocket. Now, Plex knew the old security was going to be obsoleted eventually, and they developed a new downloaded software called Component Host. Initially, it was only used in the UX environment. And no lie, when you upgraded to the most current version of Chrome last year, bad things happened, and individuals downgraded the TLS version that was supported by the browser so that they could print labels. Plex released new versions of the Component Host for UX that addressed the label issues but UX and classic users were still needing the WebSocket and support for the older security levels for DCS check-in and check-out functionality. Now, there were many communications about TLS and the move to component hosts, and then they were recanted or the timeline move, and users were overwhelmed with all the messages and postings in the community. As a consequence, many people have quit listening. That is no longer an option because like I said on an earlier slide, Microsoft and Google are making changes this spring, which will remove the ability for the older versions 
of that TLS security layer we were talking about to be used. The newest version of the component host works for classic and UX users and is the supported software going forward. So what is supported? An entire list of operating systems. Notice Windows 311, 95, NT, XP, or Vista are not supported. Does anybody remember Bob? Well, he's not supported either. Okay, so that was a little geek humor, but I do know people still holding on to their XP machines and they're still using a copy of Office from 2000, but they're not using Plex. Basically, any Windows operating system after 2013 will not have a problem. And I don't know of anyone who still has a Windows phone. Browsers are all about the version of the browser you're using. To put this into perspective, if you're using Chrome, the current version is 90. TLS 1.2 has been supported since version 30. Firefox is at version 88. Microsoft is not supporting any version less than Internet Explorer 11. And Safari is at version 14. It would be very difficult to have a version of a browser that is not capable of supporting TLS 1.2. Remember, TLS 1.2 has been around for 10 years. In order to test, you need to know two things. First of all, which is what version of the component host are you using? To find that out, go to Add or Remove Programs and scroll down to look for the Plex component host to find the version. If it's anything other than 1.3, get the newest version and install right over it. If in doubt, you can uninstall before you install the current version. You can uninstall from Add and Remove Programs or click your Windows icon and scroll down to the P's. Click on the folder Plex Component Host and click the Uninstall Plex Component Host and follow the instructions. To uninstall the WebSocket browser, select the Windows icon, scroll down until you see the folder for Plex, Manufacturing Cloud, and you can see the uninstaller for WebSocket browser. Click it and follow the instructions. The second thing to test is connectivity to Plex. Connectivity Test Plex is an easy to use tool that is available now that will confirm TLS versions on whatever browser you use to open it. Once you've confirmed the browser you are using supports TLS, you'll want to make sure your, company, your computers that print labels have the correct version of the component host and test that. You will want to test the things you do against the test database, which has had support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1 removed. Plex suggests testing connectivity beyond the component host tasks we've been covering. So how do you get the most current version of the component host? In Classic, from the normal sign-on screen, click the PC setup link at the top and then scroll down to the highlighted section on my screen. Click on the View the Plex Component Host Installation Information and Download Here hyperlink. Select the operating system supported, and the software will download. Now, this is a 34 meg file, so the download could take a little while. Once downloaded, click on it and start the install. You'll want to close and reopen all your browser windows before you continue. Another method is to use the Knowledge Center. Everyone in either Classic or UX can access the Knowledge Center through Plex, or you can use this URL to go there directly. Host or choose the host version depending on the operating system of your computer and it will download. Click on it to load, choose typical install. If you customize this, you'll need to do a manual update when the next version of the component host is released. Very important. Make sure you close all your browser windows after the component host is installed and then resume work as you normally do. Also, the first time you print a label with the component host, a pop-up box will appear asking you to confirm the software. Check the box and continue on. Now this is geek stuff. And depending on the size of your business, you might have a dedicated department or people to ask this of. The question is, how do I know if all the people using Plex have the right stuff? If you're a small organization, sneakerware, walking around to the computers and doing a quick check. Otherwise, involve the IT department, managed service provider, or whomever to help you check and to be sure you follow the established testing protocols. These are a few tips we can offer. 
If you have questions, Plex is hosting a weekly Teams meeting. You can find the information for this in the community, and it's available to anyone who wants to join and listen in to others or bring up any concerns or questions you may have. While Plex recommends uninstalling WebSocket, it's not mandatory. I personally like to remove old software so it doesn't clutter my machine. And this error was someone on our team. It didn't want the WebSocket. We needed to load the component host. Plex removed WebSocket from the Knowledge Center to reduce confusion and because it's no longer supported. That's the end of the presentation. So right now, you know everything about TLS and component host, and we'll open the lines for everyone if you have any questions or comments. So everybody remember that I did mute you before we recorded. Who's got questions for Veronica? Yeah, uh, I had a lot of problems with label printing and somebody in the Plex community, I have a whole bunch of Zebra four by six label printers that are USB. And I think it was Tamara Danner said, could use a generic printer instead of the zebra drivers. And uh, it turned out she was right, but I'm, I'm still unclear on why when I'm printing from Windows to a label, why TLS impacts that. It is because we are, you're not, how do I say this one? When you print from Plex, right? it's not located on your computer. It's actually located through the browser. So what the TLS is, is the version of security in the browser that encrypts, the, and this is all gonna sound Greek or geek people. It encrypts it between the browser and the data center. So that's the TLS version. It, it's just a hidden um, background security that encrypts data. So depending on which versions are supported by, you know, the big companies are the ones that everybody else will use. So I had all kinds of flaky results until the general availability of Plex component host, if that's what the latest one is called. That is correct. And sometimes it'd work and sometimes it wouldn't. And I was trying Canary browser and, uh, So you are a hundred percent correct. But I don't right really now, have to worry I, about it anymore. <laughs> right. You don't have good. to worry about it anymore. Use the new component host and we have I've not heard of anybody having any issues with it. And the other question I had is a thing I don't want to do is sneaker net. I don't want to check all my computers. And maybe that's an imprudent way to look at it. Uh, do you have, and, and this is again, you know, do you have a physical network? Can you, you know, use group policy to push that out? I'm not a network administrator anymore and I'm, I'm not most up on the most current versions of, of Microsoft. So I can't tell you how to do it. No, I, I do not have any way to push out all the updates and, and have the machines update themselves overnight, but a handful of machines are Windows 8 and most everybody is Windows 10 and most everybody has got browsers in the, the upper 80s and 90s. And uh, another way to put my question is, do I have to worry about installing the new Plex component host on all those machines? And I would worry about the Windows 8 ones because um, I'm gonna go back a few slides, people. That's browsers, no more, operating systems. So Windows 8 to support Win TLS 1.2 requires a patch and a manual configuration. Now, I don't know what those are, but I could you know, probably Google them and find out, but definitely it does not support TLS 1.2 out of the box. So my we, we've had some people come in late, maybe before you end the session, we can show them how to check their version of Chrome if, sorry to put you on the spot, but. That's fine. And sorry, Bill, I didn't mean to talk over you. 
So my Windows 8 machines, I can't do any Microsoft updates on them. So uh, that's a helpful answer that I should, I should install the new Plex component host on the Windows 8 machines at the very least. Yes, and, at least, and you're gonna need component host if you're printing labels, checking in and checking out of the DCS or have way scales. That's what the component host is gonna support. If your Windows 8 machine is not doing either of those functions, then the component host is not required. I like component host on everything that's going to use Plex because that way if they go to do something that you're not expecting them to do, it doesn't cause a problem. Thanks. Veronica, do, would you mind showing everyone on the call here how to check what version they're using of Chrome? Sure. Thanks. So I happen to have Chrome here. And I'm going to flip back so that you can see the PowerPoint for a second. And that's where you want to go to, connectivitytest.flex.com. And it's that easy. I love so this says, here's my Chrome, here's, here's my browser is using, and it tells me what version I'm using. I know it's been a pretty short session. Does anybody else have any questions they want to try to stump Veronica with? <laughs> Let's not uh, do that. <laughs> hello, my name is Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Hi, yes. So I'm working with uh, Dart Aerospace as one of the IT system um, network guys here. And um, I've been testing the component host MSI file with uh, multiple sites for the GPO deployment. And unfortunately, um, I've run into a, a, a nice little hiccup with the MSI package. And um, <laughs> uh, I tested this on three, three um, sites, three different individual domain sites with, as a DP, GPL software deployment package. And they exhibit the same issue, uh, basically, for some odd reason, you, after a system reboot, but on the client side to install the software, we keep reporting back that the system still needs to restart every time. And I've done pretty much, pretty much A, B, C, D, all the way through, making sure that I'm following through the same procedure that I've always done for GPO deployment software packages with MSIs. And for some odd reason, just this one is not deploying. I would highly suggest um, joining tomorrow's call with Plex and, and asking them. So I, I, I don't have, I can't tell you off the top of my head how to do a GPO deployment anymore. So I'm not going to be your best resource, but that is definitely a question I would ask them. Well, if the package is set up is real easy to do in the group policy management, console. I mean, all you have to do is just create, make sure you have a, a shared um, location for the software package. And then you go into the GPO management tool to create a software deployment um, policy. And you select that MSI file. And all you have to do is like drop it in and then assign that GPO to the object group with all your systems are in for which ones you want. And then I pretty much, you can run the GPO updates to, on the OU in the group policy manager. And then- Are you forcing the GPO update? Uh, yes, I tried that too. Okay. I tried everything. Mm. Well, um, Ethan, since you're a client of ours, uh, maybe Veronica can give you a call after this and maybe walk you through your specific issue. How's that sound? Oh, that would be great. Because I have also tried with Plex on the community site, and they told me that they couldn't help. And they said to ask the community for assistance on my <laughs> All right. So there you go. Anyone else got any questions for Veronica? Yes, I do. It's Robert Welther. Hi, Robert. Um, we're brand new to Plex. and Welcome. Yeah, thanks. We're, we'll be uh, going live probably in 
June. Yay. And um, I'm going to be deploying probably about uh, 10 new workstations. And I just wondered if there is a recommended best configuration um, and most robust and less problematic, at least problematic, um, you know, to set up these new 10 workstations on, you know, a recommendation for browser and, you know, well, operating Plex, system. Plex yeah. supports um, operating systems, you know, if you can get anything Windows other than Windows 10, I'd be impressed. So your operating system is probably going to be Windows. It's probably going to be 10. Your browser that Plex supports is Chrome and Firefox. Um, I've had excellent work with Edge, and we've been using that one, but they do support IE11. But since IE11 is on Microsoft's um, downgrade list, and they're pushing everything to Edge, I'd stick with at least the top three. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Ethan, just an FYI, check the chat. Uh, Jesse Caldwell sent you something, and uh, he's a pretty sharp guy, so... <laughs> Yay, anybody Jesse. Else? <laughs> anybody else? Uh, okay. Anybody else? Yeah, got any I can more? try and fetch one of those. Okay. Anybody else got more questions for Veronica? And and listen, don't be uh, don't be overwhelmed because there's a lot of tech talk on here. If you come up with a question that that's not that technically deep, that's okay. Go ahead, and ask it. That's what this is really for. I've noticed there's a lot, number of customers on here from smaller sites that don't have an internal IT staff. So jump on in. Yeah, one more question, Robert back here. Um, any incompatibilities with um, uh, utilities like, um, you know, spam blockers or other um, antivirus programs that are known? Um, watch your pop-up blockers because there's still a lot of that that occurs. So make sure your pop-up blockers are turned off for anything Plex. Other than that, um, I've not seen anything um, with spam. The only spam that we personally have issues with is when we're sending from Plex to ourselves, um, it gets caught up in our spam blocker. But I can override that in our spam blocker and it's fine. Next question. So I think that Veronica didn't mention uh, and I didn't ever see Plex mention this, is in the bottom right-hand corner of Windows in the tray, there's a little icon uh, and you can click on it and see status for if label printing is running and Wayscale is running. And that's a nice feature, it's beautiful. I, I was hoping Veronica would have a comment on that. That's their new download software so that you can tell if you wanna turn, um, so that's part of your Windows operating system. When a service loads, it gives you the operation or option to view that a service is running or not running. So if your system all of a sudden won't print to a label printer, you know your IT staff's going to say reboot it. Well, the root what the reboot does is resets those services. That's a, a way you can look at just a specific service to see if it's running or not without going through the Windows operating system. Anyone else got more questions? OK, one more. All uh, right, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone wanted me to ask about malware bytes. We use that on a number of our systems. And on, uh, on I think, one of our servers, it doesn't play nicely with the, with. there's one web uh, application within malware bytes that we have to turn off. Well, we, um, use it, we use it here. We don't have any problem with it. I know. Okay. Uh, See, even Patty player. knows that one. Yeah, I win. <laughs> win. Yeah, and we, when I was a Plex customer, uh, Kim Banky, the network administrator there, had us all using malware bytes. I don't know if they still are, but um, she loves it. So I would say we haven't had any problems. Okay. Good to know. Thanks. Any more questions? All right, then. Well, Veronica, thank you so much for clarifying this. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, Veronica, you want to go to the last slide, please? 
This presentation is going to be on our YouTube channel by the end of the day today. So if you or anyone at your company is interested in hearing about these sessions, email anyone on our team and we'll add you to our mailing list. The more the better because we truly believe that a stronger Plex community benefits us all. And speaking of that, just a quick reminder to everybody to go sign up for PowerPlex. We're proud to be a diamond sponsor this year. We're sponsoring also not only the annual women's group meeting, but we'll also, we're also doing eight content specific presentations, even one completely uh, in Spanish. So Ignacio Zuniga on our team will be taking free form questions on Plex during that session, and it'll be completely in Spanish. So I will be as lost in that one as I was in this one today. <laughs> So um, if you have Spanish speaking employees on your team, tell them about this, tell them to join it and see if they can stump Ignacio. Remember PowerPlex is free again this year and it's uh, virtual again. So even if you can't attend all the sessions, just by signing up, you'll get access to the recorded content. So thanks for spending your time with us today. We know how busy you are and that you gave time to us means a lot. Have a great day and we'll see y'all at PowerPlex. Once again, Veronica, great job. Thanks so much.